the following Sequoia demo, we will resample our 3ds Max mesh to points, and then we'll remesh the resulting point cloud in Sequoia. Why do we want to do this? Cut models often consist of thousands of individual components, and in order to produce a 3D printable model from them, they have to be combined into one continuous mesh, which is a very hard uh, manual process. By resampling all objects to a point cloud and then meshing the point cloud in Sequoia, a continuous watertight mesh can be created. Direct mesh to point conversion inside of Sequoia is also planned for the release version. Now let's take a look at uh, a model at in 3ds Max. This is uh, Honda CRV and we have created a couple of uh, layers here and the one layer that is hidden contains a bunch of PAT surface objects from Krakatoa. And these objects are organized by the material of the source uh, meshes and we are s uh, spacing with 0.2 inches and displaying only 1% in the viewport. That means that each one of these PRT surfaces is going to uh, define a different color in order to represent the material of the underlying geometry. We can hide the geometry and just look at the 1% of the point cloud. Then we can open Krakatoa, switch Krakatoa to save particles to file sequence in order to uh, produce a PRT file and we'll define position, normal and color channels to be exported. This will give us the normal on the surface and the color of the PAT surface object so it can represent the materials. Then we hit the save particles button and we save the file. Once the file is imported and converted to a PAT uh, with the SPAT extension, this is a spatial uh, PAT that Sequoia generates automatically from PATs, we can display the points and we can uh, adjust the size and the opacity of the points. And since we have normals, we can even enable interactive lighting and take a look at the point cloud from 3ds Max with some shading on it. But let's keep it as uh, vertex colors only. We can create a point region of interest. We don't even need the radius because a radius of one will do nicely. And we can create some uh, hacksaw uh, partitions. But in order to save time, I have already prepared a bunch of uh, variations. Version 1 of our Hacksaw output contains uh, only 16 partitions and there were a partition with 100% of all the faces. So we'll load only 4, the first 4 partitions in order to save some time. In the beginning we uh, get only the uh, vertex uh, cloud with the vertex colors. So we still have a pretty solid looking uh, display and then the actual mesh will load and we can take a look at the wireframe of this mesh and obviously it's very very dense. If we take a look it's 86 million uh, faces on disk. So let's try 10%. That means that when we uh, create a hacksaw partition only 10% of the faces will be saved to disk. There will be uh, the original mesh will be optimized. Uh, now we can load all 32 partitions. First, once again, we get only the vertex cloud loaded, and some of the partitions don't even update immediately because they are outside of the view. Uh, so we can hit F5, and this will refresh uh, all the partitions that haven't been loaded. Will load the data. And now we can take a look at the slightly optimized uh, wireframe. This is with uh, approximately 10% of the geometry. It's not exactly 10% since uh, it is a multi-threaded uh, asynchronous process and uh, it's not going to produce the exact number that we expect but approximately somewhere there. We can hide the uh, region of interest and we can use the presets of the camera animation editor to create a turntable around the point cloud in order to look from all sides and this was a um, uh, turntable from uh, a selected object then we'll set the face reduction to 1% and we can put our second document on the side of the first one so I can see both at the same time I have the 10% mesh on the right side and the point cloud on the left. We can navigate individually, but if we 
toggle the global camera and uh, then toggle the same for the second document, then both documents will be using exactly the same camera. That means that animating through the camera animation editor, the turntable, or navigating manually, orbiting, panning and zooming, is going to affect both viewports of uh, the true, pretty much in otherwise independent documents. Now we can load version 3, which contains only the 1% of uh, the faces. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, much less dense and uh, it's very, very fast and that's uh, feasible for 3D printing. We can disable the wireframe display and um, if we wanted to create a turntable uh, from the current position of the camera, we can use the world turntable option and this will keep the distance of the camera to the uh, uh, focus object. So uh, if we wanted to create um, a close-up animation, uh, this is uh, a good approach because the object on table always zooms out in order to encompass the whole object. If the frame rate starts falling down, obviously the uh, dynamic degradation will kick in and some of the um, partitions will be displayed as boxes. So as you can see, we created a point cloud out of uh, 3ds Max um, model and then we remeshed it into a new geometry inside of Sequoia in order to be able to um, perform 3D printing.